brought the coat to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches, which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before, and those who followed, cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. So just a brief reflection as we prepare ourselves to process into church. Some time back, I watched a video of someone who rescued a child in a building that was in flames. And this child was really desperate. No one was courageous to make that dangerous mission up the floor of this building. And one person took what we can term a decisive mission, dangerous, to climb up that building. And when he went up, he rescued this child, and on coming down, people were cheering and celebrating. And we can relate this image to what we are celebrating today. The world was in need of God's mercy, and still is in need of God's mercy. And no one but Jesus Christ took this mission upon himself. And after spending some time with his disciples, he told them, I have to go to Jerusalem. I have to go to Jerusalem and die. And the apostles considered this a dangerous mission. They tried to discourage him. But for love of you, for love of me, for love of the whole world, Jesus made that decisive trip to Jerusalem to do nothing else but to give up his life to win us back into God's friendship. And today we commemorate that decisive journey to Jerusalem. We are going along with Jesus to also die with him. And that Jerusalem is the Jerusalem in our hearts. Jesus wants to process today anew into our hearts so that he can die in us. He can die with anything that stops us from reflecting that life of God's grace so that the peace, the love, the mercy, and the care of God can flower in our lives. So today, as we acclaim him, let us pray that truly always he will be our king, leading us on the way. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
Good morning, everyone. Just a quick health and safety announcement. Please be aware that the exit on this side is out of use until further notice. In the event there is an emergency and we should have to leave the church in a hurry, then please use the exits at the front of the church or the double doors in the Bethlehem Chapel, which lead to a fire exit and the rear of the car park. Thank you. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Eugene Carolan. May he rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The Word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Together. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him and release him if this is his friend. My Lord, my God, why have you forsaken me? Many dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet, I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. 
O Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my people and praise you where they are. Assemble to you who fear the Lord, give praise. All children of Jacob, give glory. Revere God, children of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbly yet, even to accept in death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld, and in the underworld, should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you. accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternity. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and have him put to death. For they said, It must not be during the festivities, or there will be disturbance among the people. Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, Why this waste of ointment? Ointment like this could have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they were angry with her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me is one of the good works 
You have the poor with you always, and you can be kind to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what was in her power to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. I tell you solemnly, wherever throughout all the world the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be also told in remembrance of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, approached the chief priests with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it and promised to give him money. And he looked for a way of betraying him when the opportunity should occur. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, Where is my dining room? in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large upper room, furnished with couches, all prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve, and while they were at table eating, Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me, one of you eating with me. They were distressed and asked him one after another, Not I, surely. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping into the same dish with me. Yes, the Son of Man is going to his fate, as the scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. And as they were eating, he took some bread. And when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, and all drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith, for the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. However, after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said, Even if all lose faith, I will not. And Jesus said to him, I tell you solemnly, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. But he repeated still more earnestly, If I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And they all said the same. They came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and a sudden fear came over him, and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here, and keep awake. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground, and prayed that, if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup away from me, but let it be as you 
not I would have it. He came back and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not the strength to keep awake one hour, you should be awake and praying not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came back and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy, and they could find no answer for him. He came back a third time and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. It is all over. The hour has come. Now the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is close at hand already. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up with a number of men armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the traitor had arranged a signal with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge and see he is well guarded when you lead him away. So when the traitor came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The others seized him and took him in charge. Then one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Then Jesus spoke. Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I was among you teaching in the temple day after day, and you never laid hands on me. But this is to fulfill the scriptures. And they all deserted him and ran away. A young man who followed him had nothing on but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the cloth in their hands and ran away naked. They led Jesus off to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes assembled there. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the high priest's palace, and he was sitting with the attendants, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus on which they might pass the death sentence, but they could not find any. Several, indeed, brought false evidence against him, but their evidence was conflicting. Some stood up and submitted this false evidence against him. We heard him say, I am going to destroy this temple made by human hands, and in three days build another, not made by human hands. But even on this point, their evidence was conflicting. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes and said, What need of witnesses have we now? You heard the blasphemy. What is your finding? And they all gave their verdict. He deserved to die. Some of them started spitting at him and blindfolding him. They began hitting him with their fists and shouting, Play the prophet! And the attendants rained blows on him. While Peter was down below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's servant girls came up. She saw Peter warming himself there, stared at him and said, You too were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know, I do not understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. The servant girl saw him and again started telling the bystanders, This fellow is one of them. 
but he again denied it. A little later, the bystanders themselves said to Peter, You are one of them for sure. Why? You are a Galilean. But he started calling curses on himself and swearing, I do not know the man you speak of. At that moment, the cock crew for the second time. And Peter recalled how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. And he burst into tears. First thing in the morning, the chief priest, together with the elders and scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, It is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At the festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favour, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him. And they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country, to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Aha, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself. Come down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling on Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, 
gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he died, and he said, In truth, this man was the son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary who was the mother of James the Younger, and Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, that is, the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. And he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who bought a shroud, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped, it in the, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching and took note of where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now invite us to sit quietly for a moment and just reflect on this account of Jesus' suffering and death and what it means for your life today. Let us ask Jesus to teach us to be selfless like him, to teach us to be humble like him, to teach us to be ready to endure difficulties for the benefit of others like him, to teach us 
to be forgiving and tolerant like him. May we now rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father. Dear friends, confident in our Father's love, we present our requests to you, Lord, and we ask you to listen kindly to our humble prayers. For all church leaders, we pray that you may inspire our Pope, all bishops and priests, to lead and guide their flocks as true and faithful leaders. Lord, in your mercy. For vocations to the religious life, we pray for the faithful response of all men and women called to follow Christ and his passion through a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For missionary work in Reading, we pray that you may give each one of us a disciple's tongue so that we may all spread the good news by everything we say or do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For joy in our hearts, we pray for joy in our hearts in the knowledge that Christ has died and risen for the forgiveness of our sins and that we too may thank and praise God as on the first Palm Sunday. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For peace in the world, we pray that the peace of Christ may come down to those parts of the world where now there is violence and bloodshed, and to our families and to our communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those troubled in mind or body, we pray that you all comfort those who are suffering with illness or the loss of a loved one, or who are facing a difficulty with no clear solution, we ask you to be close to them in their distress. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember in a moment of silence our own intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. Let us now turn to Mary, our mother, asking her to intercede, our blessed Lord, for us, as we say, Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, the mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and in our death. Amen. As we gather together to thank and praise you, Lord, we are conscious that Jesus is with us always, and so we make these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, the English martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Philip our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, but you should enter my world. But only say the word, and my soul shall.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please can I ask you to sit just for a moment and we'll listen to the notices by Gerard Ross. So a reminder of the schedule for the Triduum as we call it, the three most holy days of the church's year. Uh, on Holy Thursday, remember there's no mass in the morning, the 7.30 p.m. mass of the Last Supper in the evening, followed by adoration until midnight, and a closing with night prayer at 11.45.
On Good Friday, weather permitting, there'll be stations of the cross outside at the back of the church at half past nine. I'm told the weather forecast is not brilliant, so be prepared to come indoors, but there will be Stations of the Cross at 9.30, led by the children of the parish, and then the usual Good Friday ceremony commemorating our Lord's Passion is at 3 o'clock. The collection on Good Friday, and it'll be a retiring collection, is for the Christians in the Holy Land. This money is used to support the Christian community in the Holy Land, and in the present circumstances with the war over there, support is more urgently needed than ever. Then on Holy Saturday, in the daytime, there's a blessing of Easter food for the Polish community at 2, and the Easter Vigil Mass will be at 7.30 this year, a little bit earlier than it has been on some occasions. It begins outside with the lighting of the Paschal Candle by the Easter fire in front of the church, Three of our elect from the parish will be baptised and a number of others, as well as they, will be confirmed, receiving the sacrament of confirmation. Now, if you're wondering why Father has delegated the announcements to me, it's because this is one of the two times of the year when he really can't do this next bit himself. Because the Easter collection is traditionally given to the priests of the parish. And it's our opportunity to give thanks to God for the ministry of our very hard-working priests. So you will, I hope, have noticed that in front of you on the pews, you've got yellow envelopes like this. If you haven't got one, there should be spares in a box on the radiator in the porch as you leave. But do take one with you and return it with your offering, either when you come to the Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday night, or of course, when you come to Mass on Easter Sunday. You can also pay through the contactless machines in the colonnade and in the hall. And please remember to gift aid your donation if you can. Donations can also be made using an online giving page and there's a link to that in the newsletter. Please remember to take the newsletter home with you. A couple of weeks ago I had to collect 18 of them that were left behind in the benches after Mass. So thank you in advance for your generosity. Uh, Easter Sunday Mass times will be as usual, 9.30, 11.30 and 5, but please remember the clocks go forward an hour on Holy Saturday night, so we don't want you to arrive an hour too soon. Parish toilets are in need of modernisation and renovation, so please have a look at some proposed plans that are on display in the colonnade and in the hall. It would be great to hear your feedback on that by a week on Monday, sorry, two weeks tomorrow, Uh, Monday the 8th of April and please pass your thoughts through to the parish office and finally another reason why Father Gaston can't say this really the bishop has appointed him to a new role he's going to be the new Episcopal Vicar for Evangelization in the Diocese of Portsmouth his role here in English Martyrs remains unchanged it just means he's going to have to work even harder So please continue to pray for him. And I think I'm allowed to say, let's give him a quick round of applause. And I think and hope that that is everything. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much. I wish all of you a fruitful Holy Week. And thank you very much, choir. Please stand for the blessing. We shall receive a solemn blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked, and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.